Good morning, Essex. It is so good to see all of you this morning. It is great to be back. I have missed you. Vacation is wonderful, but it's always good to be back home again. And it is great to be with you, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for worship. If you are with us for perhaps the first or second time, I got a secret for you. You picked a great day to come to church. We're going to share communion. We're going to receive new members. It is a wonderful, wonderful day. And it's also important for you to know if you're here for the first or second time, you see that our communion table is set. If you are here, you are welcome to share communion with us. You don't need to be a member of our church or a member of our denomination. If you are here and you have a hunger and thirst for what the bread and cup offer you this morning, you are welcome to share communion with us. We'll have a few more words about that as we get closer to communion time. We also have a welcome to worship book in our lobby. If you would like to let us know you are here, you're more than welcome to fill that out and let us know. And you can always get more information about our church at our website, essexucc.org. Just a couple announcements in the bulletin that I'd like to highlight for you. Just a couple save the dates. You've been seeing them scroll through on the uh, screen as well. Uh, the Shoreline Ringers are going to be at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Old Saybrook. Mark your calendar for Sunday, June 2nd for that. And Friday, June 19th, I know it seems like a far way away, but it will be here before you know it, and your summer plans will start to fill up. We're going to do an outreach and justice fundraiser uh, at Essex Indoor Golf. We were there last year. It was a great, great time. So please mark your calendar uh, for that as well. There's also opportunities uh, to serve if you'd like to volunteer to read in our service or perhaps provide flowers or help with uh, fellowship hour. There are sign-up sheets in the lobby. And just about two minutes before church started, a little birdie flew over to my window. And I've, I've been working on my uh, bird language lately. It said somebody in church had had a birthday last week. A significant birthday, 90 years old. Carol Craner turned 90 years old. Big round of applause for Carol. So happy to celebrate with you. Congratulations and happy birthday. What a joy birthdays are, right? What a joy birthdays can be. We've had our joy banners up uh, since Easter. Uh, to celebrate that season with joy. There are over 57 references for joy in the book of Psalms. And in this book of Psalms, we read this. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Let that sink in for just a minute. What do you think that feels like? The fullness of joy. Speaking of joy, our first hymn describes God as the giver of immortal gladness. So we will begin this morning with joy, with gladness. Number four in your black hymnal, joyful, joyful, we adore you. We'll sing verses one, two, and three. Let's rise together this morning in body or spirit.
You may be seated. As we spend a few moments in prayer this morning, hear these words from the book of Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love that word, anxious. I don't love it, you know what I mean. When you think about anxiousness and anxiety, it's something that we all deal with, right? Can you imagine in pre-scientific times, a week like we had last week, an earthquake, an eclipse, that's end of the world stuff, right? And what did we do? Who went to an eclipse party? Any good stories? I know I wanna, I'm gonna have you share this uh, clip story because this might be one of the only totality parties that we heard. Um, we're from Burlington, Vermont, and we had like 100,000 extra people come to town. <laughs> but our house faces the south, and so we put all our Lauren furniture on the front, got special t-shirts, and watched the whole thing from beginning to end. There you go, I mean, that is a great party. We only, I was in New Jersey, and we only had about 91% totality. So it got a little darker, got a little cooler, but it wasn't the end of the world, right? And unfortunately, we missed the earthquake by about five minutes. Because if you're in a car, you won't feel the earthquake. So we got in a car, and we're, we're, we're driving to the next stop on our vacation, and all of a sudden, our phones started going crazy. Did you feel that? Oh my gosh, all the families checking in. Air, uh, earthquake in, in New Jersey. End of the world stuff, right? That can make you anxious, can, can give you pause. And one of the results of prayer that I love from this passage is not necessarily answers, right? Did, did you hear that? It's not necessarily results like a Christmas list. It says when we pray, if we're anxious, the peace of God will be with us and will guard our hearts. So as we pray uh, this week and in the days ahead, be on the lookout for peace as you pray. Be on the lookout for, for joy that joy that God gives, the giver of immortal gladness, in whose presence is the fullness of joy. Each week we like to take a few moments uh, and share those requests, share those things that either give us joy uh, from uh, our, our, our week that we bring to church on Sunday, or those things that have made our hearts heavy. Maybe some of us have been anxious. Maybe some of us have had difficult, uh, tough weeks. A 90th birthday is a great occasion for joy and celebration. Are there, anything, are there any other things that you would like to share with your family of faith this morning? Uh, things that we can pray with you for or celebrate with you? What are the ways we can be with you during our time of prayer? Betsy. I was very fortunate last week to be on a cruise to Bermuda and the ship was full of Connecticut fans rooting for the, <laughs> the men, and they won, and it was very exciting, and everybody went crazy, of course. Yep. And being from Connecticut, I was very proud. And this is why it's difficult to pray for results, right? <laughs> because I'm sure there was a lot of people praying for the Connecticut women as well. But, well, yes, of course, but the women didn't do so good. The wi exactly right, exactly right. The beginning of the month, uh, the joyous things to have is two granddaughters who had their birthdays, one of them is one, the other one is three years old. Fantastic. And uh, I'd like to re, uh, remember some of the people who have gone before us, such as James, 
Judy, and Cheryl. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Dudley had two of his sons come down, one from Vermont and one from Seattle, to spend the day with him on Friday, which was his birthday. Oh, well, oh my goodness, Dudley, happy birthday to you as well. Fantastic, big round of applause for Dudley. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. So this is what we will do. We've, we've specifically uh, mentioned two words this morning. We've talked about joy and peace. So I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes for a moment as we begin our time together in prayer. And I want you to take a deep breath in and just think of the word joy. And as you exhale, just think of God's peace that is with you. Take a breath in, breathe in God's joy. And as you exhale, let that anxiety that you might be carrying with you leave your body and just rest in the peace of God. Good and gracious God, as we gather this day for worship, to listen to the scriptures, we continue to celebrate the joy of Easter and the good news of your love. We celebrate the peace that passes all understanding and the presence of the risen Christ in our hearts. May we continue to know and trust in your peace and your joy and your love as we reach out in service to our neighbors and care for the world in which we live this morning, we remember those who are celebrating and we share their joy. And we also remember those who are struggling, those who struggle with loss, with illness, with addiction or depression or with alienation from those that they love. May your spirit be with those in need. And may we be of service to those in need each and every day as we join our hearts together during these moments of prayer, lifting to you the joys and concerns of our hearts. We are mindful of all those we know and love who have asked us to pray for them. So we now silently lift up to you those prayers. And we pray now together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. As Kevin and the choir get in place for the morning offering, I'll remind you that there's a QR code in your bulletin if you would like to give electronically. If you are watching online, that QR code will be on the screen in just a moment. Uh, and we're going to do something a little different for the offertory this morning. I'm going to have Sherry uh, explain what we're going to do. Okay, so this morning for the anthem, the choir will be singing All Are Welcome. And the first verse, the choir will sing the, the entire first verse and chorus. On the second and through the fifth verse, we would love the congregation to join us. You're going to be singing, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. And I'll turn to you and you'll sing at that time. All right? So here we go.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we offer these gifts in response to your goodness and grace. Continue to draw us close to one another so that we might love and serve those around us in all that we think, say, and do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. This is a reading from 1 Corinthians. There is one body but it has many parts, and all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We were all baptized by one Holy Spirit, and so we are formed into one body. So the body is not made up of just one part. It has many parts. Suppose the foot says, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being a part of the body. And suppose the ear says, I am not an ear, I am not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? As it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. Some of you may know that I recently took an EMR class an emergency medical responder class to help out with my work uh, at the fire department. And I learned a lot about the body and how it works. It's probably the first time I've explored anatomy and physiology since high school. And those were some scary pictures. Do you remember all those pictures? Quiet, you can go ahead and take a look at that. The thing I love about this picture here, I was trying to look for like good pictures of systems of the body. This was the best one I could find, but take a look at the skeleton guy. Like he's smiling and waving at us. I just think that was the greatest picture. But these systems in the body. I mean, we do it in sixth grade, right? In eighth grade and maybe in high school, but then we kind of forget. And as I was looking back on this and, and sitting through these classes, I was amazed at what our body does without us even telling it what to do. Are there any EMRs, EMTs, Doctors, paramedics, anyone else 
here. All right, let me ask it this way. There's one, there's a couple, fantastic. Let me ask it this way then. Is there anyone else here who's amazed at what the body can do? There we go, everybody should be raising. When we breathe, and I probably knew this in eighth grade, our lungs give oxygen to the blood. And the heart pumps that blood to all of the cells in the body. That's this guy right here, right? That's that circulatory system. The bones protect those vital organs, right? Our skull protects our brain and our ribs protect the heart and the lungs, all those vital organs. The muscles allow the body to move in coordination with the with the bones, the skeletal system, and our digestive system helps us get energy from the food that we eat. So we can do that all day long. Every second of every day, these systems are working together to allow us to be in a state of balance, a a state of homeostasis. It's a fancy anatomy and physiology word that means everything's okay. Everything's working like it should. And you can check on the health of the body, the health of all these systems, by looking at your vital signs. Those are important. Your blood pressure, your pulse, your respiratory rate. There's two other vital signs they taught me to check as an emergency medical responder that you don't think of all the time, your eyes, your pupils, because your pupils will tell you if something's wrong, if they don't react the way they're supposed to. And the other one is the skin condition, a very interesting sign. If you are warm, pink, and dry, you're probably okay. If you are blue, cold, and clammy, not a good sign. Not a good sign. So these vital signs help us determine the health of the body. And as you heard in the reading this morning, Paul uses the metaphor of the physical body to explain how the spiritual body of Christ works. He says it like this. He says, Next slide is, you are, all, you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. And the church is described as the body of Christ. One body, many members, all are different, but all are important. And I wouldn't have used this picture here if I lived anywhere else other than New England. <laughs> right? Because when Becky and I moved here and we started driving around and to see all these Connecticut rock walls, it was just amazing. And, and many of them, I don't know how old this one is, that looks like a semi-modern one, but many of them standing for hundreds of years, right? Each one of these rocks is different, right? You've got some big ones up here that look kind of square. You've got some small ones here that look kind of round. But each one of them fits together in a certain way to help that wall stand. And just like not all of those rocks are the same size and shape, in our reading we heard that not all of us are hearts or hands, or eyes, or ears. We're not all hearts and lungs and pupils and brains, but it's all of us together. As the body of Christ, working, serving, loving in a unique, important, and vital way. And just like if one of these rocks was missing, that wall would fall down. If one of those systems was missing, you will not be in good shape 
If your respiratory system goes, in, goes down, we can't all be lungs, but the lungs are important. We can't all be veins and arteries and capillaries, but believe me, you get a clog in one of your arteries, you'll know. In the body of Christ, it's the same way. Each one of us is special. We all bring something different to the table of the spiritual body of Christ, which is the church, right? And if you were to just look at a sheet, you might see things like deacons or outreach or finance or ushers or greeters or music or prayer or teaching. You know who might be another really important one that you may not think of? And I think of this is, this is true in a, in a health sense too. Think about the person that takes out the garbage. Think if, if you didn't have, if you were in an operating room and there was nobody to clean up, you, you wouldn't want to be operated on in that <laughs> operating room. You came into church and the garbage is just overflowing and the kitchen stinks. Who's the most important part of the body? We're all important. It's all of us together. This analogy of the body is used uh, in other places as well. Even though it's the same scripture, I wanted to go from a rock wall to a people wall, right? Because what Paul is talking about as the body of Christ is the church. In the book of Romans, we read this. So we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members of one another. And in Ephesians, we read this. And I love this because it uses some of that medical terminology as well. The whole body is joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds itself up with love as each one does its part. Builds itself up in love as each one does its part. There are those systems again, working together for balance and health and homeostasis, that process that involves all the body cells to ensure that the body systems remain stable. And it's the same with the church. One translation of that last verse has it this way. The whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I love that line. Because that kind of reminds me of us, right? The body is healthy, growing, and full of love. There's a great song from a couple years ago, longer than I'd like to remember, but it says, love is like oxygen. You remember that song? The line is, love is like oxygen. You don't get enough and you're going to die. So that leads me to think that the church has not five, but one vital sign. The sign of love. That's the church's vital sign. And I can think of no better way to invite forward some folks who want to become a part of this body of Christ. From time to time, churches offer the invitation to simply call a church home. That's really what membership is, right? It's saying, I'm going to call this church home. As long as I'm around here, as long as I'm within 10, 15, 20 minutes drive, I'm going to say, this is where I will be part of the body. I don't know if I'm going to be a, a lung or a heart or an eye or a nose or an ear, but there are opportunities to serve. And what we do with membership is give those folks an opportunity 
uh, to say this is the place uh, that they would like to be. So what I'm going to do is invite those folks who will be joining us today to come forward at this time and take their place just right up here on the steps. I'm going to have them introduce themselves to you very, very quickly. But let me invite you all to come forward. I'm going to have Millicent. Millicent, why don't you come down and just sit in the front row for a little bit as well. Why don't you guys come up this way. Come up this way. Just stand up on one step so everybody can get a good look at you. And there's also some folks who, who aren't here today uh, because they were traveling. Lynn joined a couple weeks ago uh, uh, as well because she was going to... You can go ahead and sit down. Why don't you go ahead and sit down. Sandy, come on up. And just go ahead and introduce yourself. Say hello to everybody. And uh, maybe something funny or which is your favorite body part? I don't know. What you... Good morning. My name is Krista Karsh. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm Amanda Grillo, and despite coming here for four years, now I'm finally becoming a member. <laughs> My name is Joyce Flynn. It's a pleasure to be here. Paul Thornwall, and I'm back. That's right. <laughs> I'm Betsy Ranelli, and I live in Old Saybrook, but I absolutely love this church. That's great. I am Sandy Meister. I'm going to give you that. And... So the... The idea of membership, the, the purpose uh, of this church, uh, as outlined in our bylaws, um, is to provide a sense of mission and vision for all of the ministry that takes place, both inside the walls of this church and outside the walls of this church. And one of the hallmarks of congregationalism uh, is that the basis for membership in the church is acceptance and affirmation of the covenant. And in your bulletin this morning, you have our covenant on the back page, right at the top. So what we are going to do is affirm our covenant uh, together. So would you, with me, uh, please read and affirm our church covenant. We are united in striving to know the will of God as taught in the scriptures and in our purpose to walk in the ways of the Lord. We hold it to be the mission of the church to proclaim the gospel to all people, to exalt the worship of the one true God, and to labor together for our knowledge, the promotion of justice, the reign of peace, and the realization of unity. Depending upon the continued guidance of the Holy Spirit, as did our ancestors, we work and pray for the transformation of the world into the kingdom of God, and we look with faith for the triumph of righteousness and the life everlasting. I would normally uh, then ask these members, uh, these candidates for membership, uh, three questions. But because I am also joining the church today, I am going to hand that honor off to our head deacon, uh, Millicent Hawk, to ask us these questions. Um, I am joining as a, uh, uh, as a way to begin the process of becoming the settled minister uh, here at this church. So I'm going to have you hold that too, and I'm going to have you face these folks, these kind folks over here. Do you desire to become a member of the First Congregational Church in Essex? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you accept and affirm the purpose and covenant of this church as a guiding principle and promise to faithfully support and participate in its ministries with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? If so, answer, I do. I do. And the congregation, do you promise to support these new members by holding them in your prayers and walking with them in your journey of faith together? If so, answer, we do. We do. Then allow me to humbly present the newest members of the First Congregational Church of Essex. There we go. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations. Welcome. Welcome. Great job. Paul, uh, you heard Paul say, uh, 
I'm back. And you heard Krista just simply say, I'm Krista. And Amanda, after being here for four years, uh, decided to join as well. Uh, membership is a, uh, in some cases, uh, an initial taking of vows for the first time. In some ways, it's a renewal of vows that have been taken before and folks uh, who are back with us uh, as the body of Christ. I have uh, membership certificates for all of you, so please don't leave today before you see me and are able to pick those up. Um, and afterwards, I invite all of you to uh, uh, stay for some coffee uh, and some light refreshments and get to know some of our, our new members. Um, and as we do that, I will simply say, peace be with you. Before we move on to our time of communion, let me invite you to turn to those around you and greet them this morning with a sign of God's peace. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Peace be with you, Father. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let me also invite at this time uh, those who are assisting with communion uh, to come forward. Uh, as I, again, just simply and quickly remind you that if you are a guest with us, uh, you are more than welcome to participate in communion. We would love to have you uh, join us. You guys can step here and Joan, just come right over here. Fantastic. Um, you are more than welcome to participate. Our tradition here, our custom here is to, uh, as the bread plate comes to you, uh, to simply take a piece of bread. There are gluten-free options available as well, if that is uh, of interest to you. And simply hold on to the bread. And once everyone is served, we will all partake together. And then we will do the same uh, with the cup as the cup is passed as well. Uh, we are reminded uh, that we are welcome at this table because there is nothing that can separate us from God's love. Absolutely nothing. And this meal, if anything, is a sign of God's love for us in Christ Jesus. And so with that in mind, let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, because you are good. Your mercy endures forever and our souls find rest in you alone. You bring forth bread from the earth and you create the fruit of the vine and as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes gathered from many hills into one cup, may they nourish us and sustain us so that the, by the power of your spirit, we would be made one as well, one with you, one with each other, channels of your love in a broken and hurting world as we remember that it was on the night that Jesus was eating with his disciples that he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, take this and eat, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We give you thanks. We bless you as you feed the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation.
bread of heaven. Let us partake together. There's a prayer of thanksgiving that you can find in your bulletin. Would you join me as we pray together? <laughs> Eternal God, God, now that we have strengthened and nourished such a state, may we step out into the world for courage and kindness, to bring peace, hope, and love wherever we find sorrow, sadness, and strength. Our closing hymn looks like there's no music. Don't let that scare you. It'll be a very familiar tune once you start to hear it. And the music, if you would like to follow along, is just on the next page. Oh Christ, the great foundation, in your black hymnal number 387, we'll sing verses one, two, and four. Let's rise together as we close our time.
may be seated. New members, welcome. We are so glad you're here. We are so glad you are a part of this body of Christ. If you would like to just remember some of the things from this morning, remember that all are welcome in this place. Remember that God is the giver of immortal gladness and in God's presence there is a fullness of joy. Remember that the peace of God guards your hearts and minds. Remember that you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Love is like oxygen. Amen. Mm -hmm.